I was never in my wildest dreams going to work for an NGO. Because I used to feel NGO world is slow. It has this lingo. It is just about people perpetrating, like not really solving a case, uh, as, as, as a, a problem. Because you have to, once you solve a problem, you're no longer relevant. So, but that time you see I needed a job. So that's how I got, I got to be interviewed at Amre for a position and then uh, joined them. Mm. Mm. Wow. It's interesting that they, they say necessity is the mother of invention. Yes, For you, necessity you have then to be... was the mother of these new opportunities. Exactly. Yeah. And especially going to a field. But you know, I'm also the type to take any field. Yeah. But I, I, I don't... I don't believe I'm destined for one sector. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm not. Uh, and so you joined AMREF as program director? No. Mm -hmm. First I joined as medical, as outreach manager. Outreach. 20, 2000 and? 2016. 2016. Outreach yeah. manager. Yeah. You joined the Kenya office? No, the regional the office. The regional office as outreach um, manager. Yeah. And then again, politics happened. I don't know. Is it me that politics follows? Attract, or <laughs> you attract politics because, or politics attracts you? <laughs> because they changed the... They, they made the role redundant in three months or four months. Three months. Four of your months. joining? Yeah. Oh. There so, was some restructuring and... So, but and they just got, make me understand. Mm, at a regional... Regional? Yeah. So at a regional office at Amre, from my understanding, what would an outreach even as we discuss the redundancy uh, of the position, what would an outreach manager at a region, I would understand it at a country office, at a regional office, what would the outreach manager be doing? Or what were, were so they doing then? We had this, um, you know, Amra Flying Doctors mm -hmm. was born of, uh, I think there are three or four doctors, white mm -hmm. doctors, mm -hmm. who'd get on a plane and go to various places in East Africa offering mm -hmm. services, especially right. surgical services. Mm -hmm. So that's what we call outreach. Mm -hmm. So the program was mm -hmm. just about taking doctors right. um, to, to, to remote places. areas and yeah. then they do the surgeries for like a week and bring them back. So ah. it was coordinating that and ah. it was for, the, for three countries, four Ke actually. Kenya? Kenya, Uganda, Tanzania. And South Sudan. And South Sudan. Yeah. That was enjoyable. It was four months. I hardly did anything oh, in four months. So it months. was getting oriented. <laughs> yeah, because you're doing prob you're still on probation. At least you'd gone to the four countries. No, I hadn't. You had barely gone. No. I had actually they wrote me a letter when I was in Canada for a conference. Oh. Yes. And I told them, Is the house burning down? How can you be telling me this kind of change? When I'm away, because I was I was there like three days or four days, you could they could have waited. <laughs> so I told them, okay, I'm coming to. But, I, I need to see the people who've made this decision because you can't have advertised a position in August and in November, December. You were saying it's a redundant position. So so they restructured and put and took everyone to the individual countries. So it took you where? So they brought me now to Kenya country All office. Right. Uh -huh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, that was also another long, because you know me, I, I, I like justice, mm -hmm. like follow proper procedure okay. processes. Yeah. Right. So we had we had a long tussle over it, but okay. eventually I took up the position. Okay. Yeah. So that's how I became the program director, and then they brought they they brought in one or two other programs. So it was long outreach. That's how it became the health system strengthening. Uh, so you took the program director for the health system strengthening. Yes, yes. And what did that entail? So that entailed, um, first of all, it was creating. Okay, that's why I didn't mind it. Mm -hmm. Because it was about now proving to them that you're giving me a broken system. Because they gave me a broken system. Mm -hmm. They fired guys. Mm -hmm. And telling them, I'm going to show you that I can turn this around. And mm -hmm. by the time I was leaving, I turned it off. Mm -hmm. um, it was about... I, so the health system mm -hmm. are like six or seven pillars mm -hmm. yeah. that make the cog go, go around. Yeah? yeah. So like the personnel, mm -hmm. the infrastructure, mm -hmm. commodities, finance, finance, governance, mm -hmm. research. Mm -hmm. So we used to look for 
like if you find there's an issue on mothers dying somewhere, mm -hmm. then you approach it with that health system's lens. Mm -hmm. why, why is a mother dying? It's not because they lacked blood. Mm -hmm. You keep on asking the why is eh? Why did they lack blood? Why wasn't there blood? It's because probably there was no finance to... Yeah, why wasn't there finance? It's because probably there was no proper infrastructure to get to, you know, so those kinds yeah, of things. Yeah, so you keep on asking. So yeah. maybe from finance you'll realize mm -hmm. um, our constitution, when it was promulgated, it passed the Finance Act mm -hmm. that said um, all revenues from the county government go to one pot. Mm -hmm. And so they took even the hospital revenue. Mm. In fact, most counties, the revenue that is highest is from the health services. Sure. Yeah, instead of now the revenue from, let's say, licenses or whatever other taxes they put for people. So, but the Finance Act had a leeway to say if the county felt there was a need to ring fence money, it had that leeway, I think, close 12 years. So now you started with a woman who died from pregnancy related complication because they didn't have blood mm -hmm. all the way to now you you to prevent more women from dying from that cause mm. you need to institute that um, come up with a bill that would drink fence money spent for hospitals because hospitals just collapsed mm. because that money that they collect never comes back to them or it comes back kidogo or whatever. So that's what now we started working on and started looking for money. Mm. As other programs are fixing this mother from dying, or as we look for another way of putting a stopgap measure here, of fixing the blood issue with another project, we also start doing a policy intervention on this side. So you work across. And even you find, you might find, okay, there was blood, but there was no ambulance. Mm. Or there was blood, but people didn't give or something. Right. So you you look at a problem holistically. Mm. Yeah, so that's what you used to do. Mm. Mm. Yeah, and so that meant... And the scope was Kenya for this one. Yeah, this is Kenya. Mm. 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 And so that meant also coming up with some innovative things that the NGO wasn't doing before. Mm. Mm. For example, advocacy work mm. with uh, First Ladies Association, country mm. First Ladies, because re you realize there's pillow power. Mm. And pillow power is very strong, <laughs> yeah. So we started tapping into pillow power, mm. and the the thing is um, that like that intervention mm. will not bring money mm. directly, mm. but would influence mm. how certain behaviors are done mm. in the county government. Somehow the governors mm. listen, mm. <laughs> the mm. male governors mm. listen to their wives. Yes, yeah. yeah. So. There were opportunities where I'd have to defend a wild idea of mine mm. <laughs> because it wasn't your, your, your in the box kind of, mm. oh, here's a call, let's respond to this call, then mm. let's implement, give the donor. No, this is, mm. it was just like doing things a whole mm. different way. Mm. And I want to appreciate my boss for allowing me that space. Mm. That's Dr. Mesha Kandirangu. Mm. For allowing me that space to be wild. Because mm. then I get creative. Mm. And I also, and I place that breath on the map. Mm. While I, in mm. terms of some of those conversations placed us on mm. very high spaces, both in the country and outside the country. Mm. But you needed a leader who could trust that mm. whatever you're saying mm. was who could see the vision of mm. what you're coming in with. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Mm. So I enjoyed my time. Mm. I enjoyed my time mm. at Amref. But then mm. again, mm. four years passed. <laughs> you they, did four years. Yeah. Yeah. And then I became see, for me, as long as there's still a boss. Yeah. Who's not dying, and I'm not wishing <laughs> death on any of my bosses. Yeah, you hit the ceiling again. Yeah, you hit another ceiling. Yeah. So that's that's what happened, and um, I moved to uh, Aga Khan Foundation. All right. So we'll come back now to uh, let's let's do a quick snack, mm. and then we come back and move from from Aga Khan. Mm.